Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hello and welcome to i5 for the iPhone. I'm Sarah Lane and this is the fantastic show where we pick the five best iPhone apps, news, tips and tricks and share them with you. Are you ready to rumble? I always wanted to say that. Number one. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Do you have a really steady hand? Like when you're shooting videos with your iPhone, does it seem like the camera is just floating on air? Probably not, because you're a human, and we humans shake, some more than others. But an app called Luma can really help you cut down on the shaking and give you smoother videos. Not only smoother videos, which is sort of a filter that gets applied after the fact, but you can also add nice little photo filters on the fly or to videos that you've already shot. Some videos work better than others. I, this morning, deliberately shot an extremely shaky video in my apartment, and it did cut down on the shake, but the result was a little artifacty. However, in general, Luma works surprisingly well. And even if you don't take a ton of videos on your phone, I think having it around is a good thing. Number two, got a little Siri duh tip from Anne Treeksh, who writes, last week you covered how you can use Spotlight as a dictionary by using it to search the web. Another easier way to find a word definition is to simply ask Siri, just say, what does opulence mean? And she'll look up the definition in Wolfram Alpha. Siri can do a lot of stuff using Wolfram Alpha, including translations of words and coin flips. Coin flip. Okay, here goes. Ah, that is a very good tip, Antriques. Ask Siri for definitions and get her to call heads or tails rather than digging a quarter out of your purse. Is there anything Siri can't do? Don't answer that. Number three. So for the last few weeks, I've been letting a little app called Ozito run in the background on my little phone and learn little things about me. Now, why would I want to do that? Because the idea is that with information about my habits, my commute, the time of day I usually go get coffee and stuff like that, Ozito can turn into a predictive intelligence assistant and push updates to me about things I need to know, an accident on the highway in front of me, or a heads up that it's about to rain. In the app itself, I shared my calendar with Ozito, so I've got a snapshot of what's on deck for today. I can scroll down to past updates and reminders, but the idea is that you shouldn't actually really have to think about Ozita running at all or check in with the app at all because it's supposed to leave you alone until you need to know something which it'll push to you. By the way, it's worth mentioning that having push notifications on is a requirement or the app is basically useless. Now, some people don't like push, so that's a consideration before you install it. I've also gotten some heavy traffic warnings from Ozito on my normal commute but at times I don't normally commute, so that's a little odd. Maybe Ozito just needs more time to get to know me and my particular schedule. I also have some airline travel coming up, so we'll see if it can handle pushing me my boarding pass. Overall, it's kind of like Google Now for iOS, but it has a lot of room to grow. At least it's free. Number four. So over the weekend, a friend and I were hanging out. It was a beautiful day. We were having drinks. We were taking photos the usual. At one point, I accidentally deleted a photo from Camera Plus, though, and I was like, oh, no, oh, no, I hadn't exported it to my camera roll yet, and the picture was gone forever. My friend says, why don't you just shake to undo? And I was like, what does that mean? And he's like, try it. So I did, and I got my photo back. Shake to undo is something that Apple actually built into iOS many versions ago. I think it was like iOS 3. And it works for blocks of text, like copying or pasting, that sort of thing. But I hadn't realized that app developers could add Shake to Undo functionality into their apps too. So far, I found Shake to Undo extremely helpful for photos in Camera Plus, absolutely. Also for emails in my email app mailbox, and definitely for cutting and pasting. The problem is, or the potential issue, is that you don't want to get too used to it because it's a feature for developers to use, not a requirement. So it's not just going to work in any app. 
I've also found that it doesn't work in certain apps that you think it would, like the native camera app in iOS. My thinking is because it's attached to iCloud and PhotoStream, that undo wouldn't be a local command. You kind of need local for the shake. In any case, if you use an app regularly that lets you shake to undo and you think it makes your life better, please do let us know what that app is at i5 at twit.tv because there is absolutely nothing dorky about this. Finally, number five. I've gotten so used to reading on my iPhone, sometimes I forget how small the screen actually is. Articles, emails, web pages, I read it all. In fact, sometimes I like that small screen. Sure, the iPad's better for screen real estate, but I don't always have my iPad with me. My phone, I pretty much always do. So I try to keep up on any advancements in things that are good for reading, like ebook apps. And a free app called Readmill is my new favorite. It's not actually a bookstore, it's an ebook reader. So let's say you have ebooks in either PDF or EPUB format on your computer. You can just upload them to readmill.com slash library, then they'll be synced to your iPhone. When you read a book in Readmill, you just, well, you just start reading, but you can also do some fun stuff like change the text size to whatever's comfortable for you. There's a night mode, or you can highlight a paragraph or a block of text that you really like and make a note of why. Your reading history and your notes will be added to your Readmill public profile and your history, although you can set your reading activity to private if you're not interested in everybody knowing that you really, really, really like Christopher Pike teen horror novels. Those were really good, by the way. Readmill keeps stats on when you started a book, like today when you finished it, or maybe when you abandoned it. Just It's good to know for later. And it keeps all of your archive history nice and clean. For a free app, it's the perfect reader. Oh, and one more thing before we go. Got an email from Steve who writes, on episode 39, a viewer offered a duh tip about the ellipses in tweets. Well, the official Twitter app already turns those three periods into a one character ellipsis automatically without the need for holding down that period button or creating a shortcut. This has helped me save space several times. It seems that Apple Twitter was already thinking ahead. Thank you for the follow-up, Steve. Even though I use TweetBot, that's, that's just the Twitter app I like the best. It's nice to know where Twitter's iOS integration has a leg up on its competitors. All right, that's it for this show. If you'd like to automatically download i5 every week, and I think you do, just hit the subscribe button at twit.tv slash i5. That's where you can catch up on past episodes and find links to our featured apps, tips, and tricks, too. Email us at i5 at twit.tv, leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5, or send us a video with an app review of your own. I'm Sarah Lane, and I'll see you right here next week on i5 for the i5. Bye.